Evening, everyone. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Tuesday night. It is 8.47 p.m. here in uh, California, December 16th, 2025 is the date. Latest activity does show some movement here north of Riverside with a 3.1 earthquake. This is uh, towards the northern end of the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Also a uh, thrust fault here, the Sierra Madre Fault Zone here at the base of these mountains. A uh, little distance off the San Andreas Fault. Um, nothing, I don't see anything big going on there in Southern California for now. Still getting some clustering going on uh, across the area near the Sulphur Mountain region. Uh, from what I hear, there may be some older volcano features out here. At least a few folks mentioned that there in the comments. Uh, quite a few ones and twos, uh, including a couple threes out there. There's been two distinct areas of swarming here in the last week. Just keeping an eye here on Southern California. It's you know, it could, we could see a big event out here at any point in time. A little bit of activity stretching off the San Diego coast as well. There's a 3.4 way off there into the Pacific. Uh, let's see. A little uncertain on if, uh, I'm sure there's some fault systems out here. It's just really not marked on the map. Uh, either way, just keep an eye there on Southern California. Up into the Bay Region, San Francisco area, a couple smaller earthquakes there today. Uh, including a three-pointer outside the San Ramon area that's been a, a area of some swarming recently. Also an odd little earthquake away from the Hayward Fault here. Looks like about eight miles deep underneath this area west of Hayward for a 1.8. Uh, near the Santa Rosa area, still seeing some movement. This is where a uh, four-pointer struck here. And was it yesterday or the day before? A couple days back here. Uh, we're starting to see some activity stir up there again. 1.9 and a 2.0 here in the last couple hours. Uh, also a little earthquake north of me here, just outside of Chico. Uh, very small earthquake, 0.6. Uh, just a little odd. Also some movement here across the coast range. Got a 2.1 and uh, let's see what we got out there. A couple other earthquakes this morning. There's one right smack dab on the Cascadia subduction zone. That's a 2.2. Shows eight miles deep. Uh, maybe it looks like it's just right off the interface here as the Juan de Fuca plate uh, begins to subduct underneath this region. Technically, this is going to be the Gorda plate here. Uh, but either way, that is right on that plate boundary. Uh, we did have some earthquake activity out here in the Gorda ridges from yesterday. That does uh, stir things up down in this region. So we are, so it looks like we're seeing a little bit of uptick here in this region as expected. I do want to double check the slow slip events here. Cascadia trimmer, see what's going on here on this fine Tuesday. Oh, there we go. I think I called that this morning. <laughs> I said to watch for this area because this will probably be amplified. You know, a simple ex ex uh, explanation here for this is the Gorda Ridges is a spreading seafloor center out here and you can tell where the strain normally transfers down to when we get activity out here right look at the ridges being formed all down towards the southern end of the cascadia and uh, that you know obviously it did amplify some earthquake activity and the trimmer counts were elevated in that same area where i was calling them this morning so not a big n uptick we got uh, actually that's a decent amount it looks a lot smaller there on the map I thought there was only maybe 20 or 30, but that shows um, that shows 192 epicenters there. That's quite a bit. Now, this is not volcanic tremor. This is occurring down uh, below the locked area of the Cascadia subduction zone. So that uh, further, uh, definitely further stressing the locked area uh, where we will eventually see another big mega quake out here the last one was back in 1700 of course we're uh, kind of watching that for a partial rupture as well we normally see those in between major events and we have yet to see one uh, Pacific Northwest relatively quiet nothing uh, major going on up there for now uh, a little bit of activity stretching up through Utah into Yellowstone 
Um, I guess we can give a quick glance here at the Yellowstone overview map, see if anything's standing out. Uh, but you know how I feel about these graphs here. They're just, they're kind of, uh, am the amplitudes here are turned down. And there's really no way to know if we got any decent activity stirring up out here. You know, is this earthquake activity? Is it wind? You know, what what's showing up out here? I just really can't, uh, we don't have any way specifically of knowing what's going on looking at these graphs anymore because they've amplified them, well, they squashed them. And then the ones I used to use over here for the uh, Yellowstone stations from the USGS site uh, is offline. Well, they're on, they're back online now as far as the site goes, but let me see. Yeah, see, the data itself is still offline. It doesn't matter which one you look at. They're all offline, and that is a bummer because these were working, and we could at least see the data. Now, now the... Uh, the plug has been pulled and have no clue what's going on there for, uh, you know, earthquake activity. Just got to take their word for it that uh, there's really nothing major happening. I mean, we got a little 1.0 from earlier this morning, but that's about all that's showing up there. Uh, nothing new across the rest of the country. Just typical movement out there in the oil fields of Texas. Quite an active day out there across the western area of the Pacific Plate. Got a, uh, man, look at that deep earthquake there this morning underneath the Russia area. Uh, we are starting to see some elevated movement here north of the Japan area. And I'm talking about this section right here of the Kuro Kamchatka Trench or the Chishima Trench here. Look at these three earthquakes. Um, 4.5, couple other fives in there as well. This segment, uh, roughly about here, the northern end of the Japan Trench, all the way up to where that 8.8 .8 struck. Uh, the the fault rupture, or the plate rupture, plate boundary rupture, was about 500 kilometers in length here. So it was about about up here down to this area. Uh, but this region right here is fairly well primed for some big mega quake activity. And I say that because we have not had any in quite a while far as a major release of stress out here. We've had the nine pointer, you know, 9.1 back in 2011 and the more recent uh, big earthquake swarms down here, including a seven pointer, 7.6, I believe. Uh, they're in the northern end of the Japan Trench, but starting to fill in here. And that's a little concerning because this could be the next spot here where we see some mega quake activity. This is uh, a portion of the Chishima Trench here. This is an advisory, earthquake advisory, that was put out by the Japanese uh, Meteorological Agency here recently. Um, thinking that uh, th there could be an impending mega quake event out here soon. Northern end of the Japan Trench into the Chishima Trench here. But technically, uh, you know, it, it covers this area, but also a portion of the Kuro Kamchatka Trench here, about right here, that has not ruptured in quite a while. So just keep an eye on it. We're definitely seeing some uptick there going on in that uh, region of interest right now. Uh, also an earthquake just off the Nankai Trough, it looks like. Notice this 4.7 off of the plate boundary here. It's kind of an odd one. Out here in these, uh, oh man, I don't know what those are, little ocean ridges out there looks like. Here's the Nankai Trough up here. This building up some steam here for a mega quake. Just a matter of time before that uh, decides to pop. Uh, wow, pretty good cluster of earthquake activity here across the Java Trench into the, um, it looks like um, south of the Philippines there, into the Philippine Trench. Pretty good cluster of uh, threes and twos, maybe a couple fours thrown in there as well. Nothing big, but definitely elevated. A uh, number of threes out there across New Zealand. Some older, deeper activity and some shallow adjustment there. Uh, across this area of the plate boundary. Alaska, another five-pointer up there across the uh, subduction zone of the Gulf of Alaska. And this is a, another region, if you've been watching my videos, I've been talking about what, keeping an eye on this area specifically. Um, one thing I look at when I, I don't forecast earthquakes, I don't predict earthquakes, I look at areas of interest where time uh, has been, you know, sufficient enough uh, to where we could see an earthquake of considerable size. And this is one area out here 
uh, just specifically this area of the Gulf of Alaska that's uh, could could be uh, looking at maybe some larger movement here soon. Everything's been happening around it. We have had that seven pointer, uh, a more recent seven pointer over here um, this year, and then also an eight point one back in two thousand uh, two thousand twenty one. So this area definitely has um, a lot of stress that's been building up on it here recently. So just gotta watch it. We do have that earthquake back prior to the subduction zone interface here. Uh, 5.0. Let's kind of keep an eye on that region there. Uh, where the seven pointer struck here a while back, got some aftershock activity. Nothing big. Some twos and threes stirring up there. That uh, should continue for a little while. Let's see what else we got. Little light in terms of earthquake activity across the Middle America Trench and the Peru Chile Trench down here. A little quiet. A little clustering going on out there in western Turkey once again. Notice that stack of earthquakes here in the 2 and 3 range. Just been consistently swarming there off and on over the last several months. Looks like a 4.1 over here along the plate boundary as well. Uh, just kind of keep an eye on things here. But I do think we need to watch this area around the Pacific Plate. And then again, California here. It's just... It definitely looks like things are starting to stir back up here across the northern half of the Pacific Plate, as far as this plate boundary goes. And uh, I'm still watching this area closely. Yeah, definitely a pretty good cluster of activity out here. Look at that trail of movement leading up to the Cascadia subduction zone. All right, uh, uh, let's see, space weather activity. See what's going on here on the sun. We do have this coronal hole number eight and seven. That's uh, much further out there on the western side of the sun right now, not not facing the planet anymore. We do have this one coming up here in a number of days before that's directly lined up. And also out there on the far side of the sun, we have a very active area, very active in terms of flaring activity. There is some um, bright features here on the UV image of the sun indicating that sunspot. Uh, right now, let's see, we're just barely getting a glimpse of it. A little hard to tell if it's, uh, you know, super complex or not, but it is massive in terms of coverage area. Uh, so we'll watch that here in the coming days. The flare threat right now will remain low, uh, but not much longer once that sunspot area gets into view and we can look at the complexity model of the magnetic structure, then we'll uh, may have to bump up the flare threat. 1% or less for X flare, M flare at 20%, C flare at 85% chance. We're way down there in the B flare category right now. At a B, 6.9. Roar activity possible here uh, coming up on the 18th or so. We'll check that as we get a little bit closer to the time period. All right, West Coast activity. Definitely got a lot of rainfall coming in here. Um, I think I picked up just about half an inch here outside of my place, outside of Chico here in Northern California. Not a lot, but that's, uh, you know, anything is good. And the next couple of weeks here are going to be pretty eventful as well with storm after storm. Set to uh, aim at the uh, West Coast. Look at this line of moisture right here. That is very sufficient uh, and heavy rainfall there. It does look like the Bay Area northward. Um... I should be included in that, hopefully. Um, yeah, it looks like we'll be included here around the Chico area. Area. This would be reading southward into the Sacramento region where we'll get uh, some heavy-duty rainfall coming up. This is around December 24th, uh, but technically this will be at 6 p.m. on Tuesday the 23rd. This is at UTC time. So next week looks pretty wet. Uh, Southern California going to get a dandy of a system as well with that cutoff low. Look at that moisture being pulled up there from the south. Yeah, you know, pretty uh, decent rainfall there in Southern California recently. Uh, let's check out the total accumulated precipitation runs here. Doesn't go all the way out too far, um, but uh, this only goes out 162 hours. It looks like ECM WF model. Roughly about the same. Either way, we got a series of storms set to uh, come into the West Coast, including the Pacific Northwest, where they're probably not welcoming that rain anymore because they've had a lot of flooding and whatnot up there 
Uh, dry across the desert southwest. Of course, that's typical around this time of year, right? Definitely not monsoonal moisture That's uh, or mons monsoonal season. That's in the summertime down there. And they get quite a bit of rainfall in the summertime. All right. Uh, let's see if there's anything else going on. Just be on guard, folks. A lot of movement happening. Nothing big yet across California, but you know we're starting to we're definitely starting to see a lot of signs here of uh, possibly maybe seeing some larger activity. It, again, it's it could happen at any moment. We've uh, we've gone on for quite a while. You know, a lot of people complacent. Oh, it's never going to happen, and that, I get it. You know, people have been talking about having a big earthquake down here for many, many years, decades, and um, we have yet to have it. But uh, we'll just keep an eye on things and be prepared. That's the best we can do. And also watch, you know, the Crow Camp Chat Cup. As I've stated here, though, in the last several videos, uh, we do need to watch the upper half here of the Pacific Plate boundary. Not really worried about the ocean here, uh, but you just follow... A split here northward, probably about the Nankai Trough northward, all along the Aleutian Trench down south in the Southern California. It's just we've seen a lot of activity stirring up out here recently, and uh, I, I don't think we're done yet with the uh, larger activity. It has these little quiet periods, but they come and go, and then one of these days it's going to come with a vengeance there, and it's going to be a, a big earthquake eventually. All right, seismograph stations out there, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on there for now. Looks pretty solid. I don't see anything of any unusual activity. And that goes for the uh, the majority of the stations out there. Have yourself a wonderful Tuesday night. I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it, 9 o'clock bedtime sounds great for me. I'm not even joking. Last couple nights, I have not been sleeping well. I don't know what it is. I really don't. I don't drink a lot of caffeine in the daytime. I, um, you know, eat normal. I don't indulge in a bunch of junk food before bed or during the day for that matter. But, uh, I just haven't been sleeping all that great. I've been kind of, kind of weird. I go to bed at around 11 and I'm lucky if I go to sleep by two o'clock in the morning and then I get up at seven or eight and, um, yeah, it just, it doesn't feel like enough sleep. So I'm going to try and get in bed early tonight and hope for some uh, some solid sleep there. You know, counting sheep and whatnot. <laughs> that doesn't really work, right? It works when we were kids, right? It, it kind of it um, gets our minds off things when we're kids, and then we fall asleep. But for adults, I don't know. I've never had that uh, any luck with that. Alrighty, have a good one. We'll see you guys out here for the uh, Wednesday morning update. Take care.